Welcome back, welcome back. This is still Y Morning here on Y254, the, uh, the hottest breakfast show in town. So uh, we are on to our first conversation of the day and it's all about career and today we are talking about the mindset. Yes, so if you want to take part in this discussion, the hashtag to use is Y Morning at Y254 channel and I am joined with an expert uh, with me here is Nangami Masaha. The name is a bit hard for me to pronounce. She is a mentor, a corporate trainer, and public speaker. Nangami, thank you for joining us. It's my distinguished honor to be here. Thank you for having me. Welcome. Yes. So tell us a bit about <coughs> who you are and what you do. Um, who am I? Hmm. That's a very difficult question. I think, I know that you've asked who am I. I'm mm. going to go into rather the philosophical aspects of it. Who okay. am I? Um, I? I believe that I'm just a piece of consciousness, I'm awareness, and that has been here. I observe, I adjust, and I react. That is who I am. But what I do, like you mentioned, I'm a corporate trainer, I'm a public speaker, mm -hmm. and um, that's what I do. But in terms of who I am, I am just a piece of consciousness just moving about the planet. Oh, all yes. right. And I believe you're passionate about the youth? Ah, indeed I am, yes. Why, why the youth? Um, I believe that I was once, I believe, okay, I'm still young, but um, now that <laughs> I'm on the third floor, I'm, I'm tempted to imagine that I'm quite old, still but I'm, I'm, in, um, I'm, I'm very much passionate about the youth because mm -hmm. I have been through experiences. I have encountered things in life that I believe um, mm -hmm. would be quite interesting for the youth to come to understand or for them to learn from mm -hmm. inside of those you know it, it is said that sometimes you have to sh stand on the shoulders of giants mm -hmm. i have stood on the shoulders of giants and i believe that i could also be a giant on whose shoulders other youth can stand and probably learn from me one or two three things that i have learned and just dish it out amazing amazing yeah so uh, let's uh, let's begin talking about the mindset sure uh what about the mindset What's, uh, what's so unique about having a positive mindset? <coughs> um, mindset is everything. Because I don't think anybody can get in life if you have the wrong mindset. Because in the mm. mindset, actually mindset, simply put, is the philosophy of life. It's your view on life, what you, mm. what you believe life is. And there are two types of mindsets. There's the fixed mindset and there's the growth mindset. Those are the two things in the mindset. And mm. the fixed mindset is what is ubiquitous with most, most young people. This is the mindset that is pervasive in most young people. This is where you believe that I have talent. That therefore, I'm a natural. I don't have to put in much effort. I don't have to do quite much because I'm endowed. Mm. And effort is for the people that are, uh, that are less endowed. So I really don't have to do anything because I'm smart. I'm intelligent. Mm -hmm. I got it. I, I have the meter's touch. You know, I've been touched by the hand of God. The people in the fixed mindset believe like that. But then there's the other aspect of the fixed mindset mm -hmm. where you believe, oh my goodness, talent is everything. I lack talent. Therefore, I'm nothing. I, I just have to sit in my corner wallow mm -hmm. and oh well, wait to die. Now, the antithesis mm -hmm. of it, which is the growth mindset, which is now different from all the shenanigans that is happening in the fixed mindset, is believing that, yes, talent is everything, but mindset trumps talent. So in the, in the growth mindset, you believe that talent is king, but mindset is King Kong. That is the beautiful okay. thing about being in the growth mindset. So you believe that, yes, I have the talent, but for me to go the extra mile, I really have to put in the effort. And I believe that is where most people are supposed to be in the growth mindset. Because in the fixed mindset, you have people like musicians, even footballers who come to um, the fore, they do quite impeccable works and then they disappear. Why? Because they think, but I've always been smart. Mm -hmm. I've always been good. How come I'm not stopping the leads? I'm not stopping the charts? It's because they believe I really don't have to do much. Mm -hmm. I'm God's gift to mankind. Um, it's j I'm a natural, you know? <laughs> yes, I'm a natural. This is, this, is, this is how things are supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. And uh, where you're supposed to put yourself is in the growth mindset. And something else about being in the fixed mindset mm -hmm. is where you believe that failure is not an option. And I believe this is a platitude that has been put out there a couple of times, which is very, lo which is very wrong. Yeah. Failure is an option. It is an option. It okay. is an option. People awesome. say that failure is not an option. Failure is, it, is, is an option. The, the moment you get into something, when you want to do something, especially for the first time, it's a guarantee that you're going to fail. You're going to suck. <laughs> you're going to be so bad at it that you're going to almost hate Wish yourself it for it. Yes, you're yeah. going to give up because it's the first time you're doing something. Mm -hmm. And failure is going to be part of the process. So that's the beautiful thing about being in the growth mindset. You're not bothered by failure. If mm -hmm. anything, you like a challenge. Uh -huh. So yes. you fail at it and then you, you, you stand back again yes. and you, you win the next yes. time. You, you, you keep you on doing it. You keep on doing it over and over again until you become so good at it. All right. Yes. So how does one come from the fixed mindset, mm -hmm. which you said is not uh, mm -hmm. quite positive, you know? Yes. So how does one come out of the fixed mindset? Um, hmm. You really have to do the work on yourself. 
And self-awareness is important, which this is where personal development comes in because you have to understand where you are. Now, um, mm -hmm. just to take you back probably in terms of my own life journey and why I became so interested in the youth, yeah. because my 20s, like I mentioned, I'm in the third floor, so you can understand that I'm quite, I, I consider myself a dinosaur. So I'm <laughs> thinking that um, I'm, a I'm a Neanderthal, so I, I'm thinking that yeah. there's something I, I can teach um, the youth. Of so in my yes. 20s, I was mm -hmm. a bit mediocre in the way I did my things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got pregnant early, early, early on in life, not early on, actually I was 21 when I got pregnant, I was a second year at the university, so there was really nothing much to write home about myself. Mm -hmm. So I struggled through college because despite the fact that my parents were supporting me through it, it, it wasn't the best condition to bring up a child. So I got yeah. into the mindset of just the struggle and struggle became a part of me. So I figured, ah, I just want, if I was in the West, this, would, this is what I'd have in <laughs> mind. I just want a small car, a small house and um, just have the picket fence. Mm -hmm. That that's is all enough. I, yeah, that's, that's enough. That's all I, I want to have. And mm -hmm. then 2018 happened. This is when I hit rock bottom. I had lost my job because I was working in Mombasa in a logistic company. And then the company folded and they went to Western. So I was left in Mombasa. I didn't have anything to do. My son mm -hmm. at that particular point had, um, he had fractured his, his hand and he had, done, he had uh, undergone through surgery like twice. Mm -hmm. So I was his caregiver. I don't have a job. He's bedridden. He's supposed to take care of him like the entire time, 24 seven a day. I can't get out of the house. Mm -hmm. Having a house help was an, it was quite expensive for me to even just say I can have a help so that I can go out there and hustle. Mm -hmm. So what happened is that the bills kept on racking up now. I kept on having a pile of bills and of course like the quintessential struggle story. I couldn't, I wasn't able to like take care of myself so I was kicked out of the house with my son. But here's, mm -hmm. here's the beautiful thing about this story which, which makes it a bit a bit much better for me was that before I was kicked out of my house, the yeah. caretaker was, was a very young and very nice gentleman. So he came and told me, you know what, you have ad arrears for two months, your bills have piled up for two months. So what you're going to do, we're supposed to come and kick you out of the house in, mm -hmm. uh, on Friday. But I, I don't want to <laughs> humiliate you. I don't want to embarrass you. So kindly just do me a favor. Just and leave the house yeah. before dawn. My because goodness. you have a child and I wouldn't want to throw you out mm -hmm. with a child and I know your struggles, I know what you've been through. So I said, thank you so much for the, uh, for the heads up. I'll leave before noon and I wow. left. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just packed a small bag for myself and my son and I went to my cousins and, and I went and, st and, and stayed there. And um, so I figured I don't have money to come and pay the rent. So I called my father and I didn't tell him that I, I had arrears that mm -hmm. had piled. So I told him, I can't meet rent for this month. How about you just sort me out? And he sent me the money. I called the tenant, uh, the caretaker, caretaker, and told him, mm -hmm. I have one month rent. Can I pay? And then because you have my deposit, I can't just come pick my stuff. Because I knew from that point on, there's no way You're I was going, going to, to clear that, 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 uh, that, that bill. And um, I told my cousin, hey, you have a big house. She was staying in a two-bedroom that time, and her son had gone to boarding school. Mm -hmm. So I told her, ah, you have a big house. How about I can just come and help you, you know, uh, around the house? Let me just come and stay with you because she's expectant. You are all alone. I can't keep you company. I didn't tell her that I want to come and stay with you because I've been kicked out of my house. Uh -huh. It's only two so weeks that ago. Yes. That was a good strategy. Yes. You know? <laughs> it was only two weeks ago when she was at my place. She told me, you know, I figured there was something wrong with you. <laughs> I just ah, knew. Okay. Yes. I just, I just, because I told her, I told her, but then, you know, when I came to stay this because I missed rent. And she said, uh -huh. I knew there was something that. She I knew it. Yeah, yeah. she knew it. And <laughs> so I went, packed my stuff and came and stayed with her and I ended up staying at her place for eight months. And she was wow. very, she, I, I feel indebted to her because I don't think there's anybody who can take you in with a child mm -hmm. for eight months, taking care of everything, literally everything, the bills, yeah. the rent, everything, food. With food, and without ever asking, but then what are you planning to live? Mm -hmm. um, what are you really Yes, to or, or you're here for how long? <laughs> oh, uh, can you please yeah, uh, just bid. pay the tokens? Mm -hmm. Like she took care of everything. And I'm always, I'm forever wow. indebted to her. Hi, Lucy. <laughs> and, um, yes, so that, that was my story. So uh, during that time, in, in those eight months when I was without a job, I was barely surviving mm -hmm. and I was just surviving off my cousins. That is the time now where I figured I want to, to do something different. Okay. Um, because I'm, I'm a trained financial and investment analyst. Mm -hmm. But I didn't feel like I had it in me to, you know, be corporates. That mm. uh, just be good, uh, be with it. Uh, how should I put it? Work with the numbers. I'm good with numbers, mm -hmm. but I don't think that is what I wanted to do. Okay. So in these eight months, it was a time for me to introspect and then find out what I wanted to do. So the beautiful thing about it, and I consider myself incredibly privileged, mm -hmm. is that I had the eight months to now sit and, and decide what I wanted to do. So I 
decided to do public speaking. I said, I want to be a public speaker. I don't know what public speaking is all about, but I'm going to find out. Wow, be you just knew this is This it. is what I want to do because I, I, I mm. used to think, okay, most people would tell me that you have the gift of gab. So I said, if I have the gift of gab, then how about I get into something that is going to uh, help me propel this gift that you people are saying I have, mm -hmm. which is public speaking. Um, in high school, I was in drama club or even primary school. So I always wanted to be before camera, before people, before a stage, mm -hmm. trying to either entertain, educate, or inspire. So I figured I can't go back to Nairobi. I don't have the money at this point <laughs> to go to Nairobi and go to the National Theatre. Mm -hmm. So let me try this thing of public speaking. And I had to start from zero. What is public speaking? Who are public speakers? How do you become a public speaker? And I realized it's not that easy. For mm -hmm. you to be a public speaker, you need to understand the laws of speech. You need to be vast with, uh, you need to read a lot because you need to understand your subject matter. Mm -hmm. be before, because before you speak to a group of people, you need to be, to be a subject matter expert. I don't want to come before a group of people and just blow, I just give them your hot air. Yeah. You need to understand everything that you're doing. So I had to go back and read. I had to start reading about the things that I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. And this, is, this had to take a period of time, but it was one step at a time. But in that moment, mm -hmm. then I discovered myself. And that is why most of the time I love to reiterate the words of the beautiful and elegant, legendary okay. J.K.L. Rowling. Mm -hmm. And she says that, that that rock bottom is the foundation upon which she built her life. And wow. I'm thinking, that speaks to me. Rock mm. bottom is also the foundation <laughs> upon which I built my life. You had to go to, I had rock, to reach rock yes, bottom for you to... Yes. You know, for start I, yes, for again. me to start rising because, uh, of course, once you hit rock bottom, the only way out is up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only way is up. I love that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so from you know from your story, what, um, for someone you know going through something and uh, some people don't take time. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes life gets ahead of you and yes. things are moving too fast. Sure. So is it okay to just stop, take a break for a while, and then just introspect and then now start again? Yes, in, in fact, um, pause is, is a very beautiful aspect. It's a very be it, I think it's a skill that everybody should master. Mm -hmm. Whenever life has, bl has given you like blows, uh, because life will punch you not only in your stomach, mm -hmm. but it gives you a damn slap in your face mm -hmm. sometimes. You know, you're thinking, oh my goodness, I'm hurting my tummy. Life is going to give me a break. No, it won't. It's going to come at you every step of the way so you have to pause you have to take time and find out what is going to work for you because if you don't pause you might just end up um, just going through life and going through the motions the motion and then you wake life. up yes you wake up 10 years later mm -hmm. you're in something you despise something you deeply abhor and you don't know where time went so you have to pause and find out what is it that you really want to do mm. and just sit it out and wait the beautiful thing about pause is what we saw with the pandemic Mm -hmm. All of us were forced to, to pause. To pause for me. Yes, all yeah. of us were forced to pause and think and re-strategize and restructure life, mm -hmm. which was a beautiful thing. Because now moving forward, moving forward, we've seen what has happened now and uh, we have approached life differently. Mm -hmm. So I think pause is a beautiful skill to master. Oh, I am amazing. I'm yes. loving this. So uh, we'll just take a short break and then we'll be back, you know, to get into details on Marty's mindset. So don't go too far. We take a short musical break. We'll be right back. Kupata police shere kama sikiza tun kwenye simu yako bonyeza star 811 star 758 hash Wera ya kwa nini unapigia mtu wakati ya shere it either two things Igo emergency ama unamwitia shere usikuwa unasumbua raia mwingine wakati wa shere pana wacha watu wagule na wa drive safe pia mimi niguche kama ni shere niguche ah naguche eh wacha chukue simu pasi we nani wacha uchukue simu ya shere pana <laughs> Kupata police shere, bonyeza star 811 star 758 hash. 
star 811 star 758 hash Afundokari kare 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 Ni kila Jumatatu saa moja nusu mpaka tatu nusu ndani ya Y254 na kuletea Y Mashariki kwa ajili ya kupata burudani Afrika Mashariki. Nasema kwamba tunakupa burudani yenye vitamini extra. Ala vile vile kumbuka the one and twos zatakuepo jambazo burudani DJ Tesco kupa muziki kizazi kipya iliyotamba inayozidi kutamba ile itazidi kutamba na zungumzia mziki wa Afrika Mashariki. Usisahau kutakuwa na dondoo na the queen of gospel perfect na mzungumzia Kalondu underscore Sim atakuwa anatuambia kama kawaida it's hot it's entertaining and it's juicy daniel dondo why mashariki london Y254 Imagine Welcome back again. Thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining, we are talking about the mindset. And we are joined by Nangami Masaka, who is a public speaker to help us with this particular topic. Uh, Nangami, before we went, I uh, was still speaking on mindset and you've told us about your story. And uh, you, you've told us the need to take a pause when we need to, you know, mm -hmm. and re-strategize and everything. Now I want to know, is there a difference, uh, you know, between mindset and attitude or it's just the same thing? Uh, most of the time, your, uh, your mindset will determine your attitude. So mm -hmm. um, attitude, I believe, is a consequence. It's a byproduct of the mindset. Because if you have the right mindset, then automatically you'll have the right attitude. Because in life, the first thing you're supposed to do you think mm -hmm. fast. Actually, you don't think fast. You see mm -hmm. what you want to see, and then you, uh, no, I think I'm getting this wrong. You think, you yes. see it, and then you become it. You think, you, you see, see it, it, and, and then, then you become, become it. it. Yes, so mm -hmm. when you think, when you think about something, when you think about somebody who's hurt you, um, mm -hmm. the, 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 the feelings that you're going to have mm -hmm. is anger feelings. And then your attitude thereabout will be uh, a nasty attitude towards them. Yeah, so it, it first okay. starts with the mind because everything is coordinated from here, from the, from the mind. So you need to have the right mindset. And then you see what you want to become. You have to see it. It has to be visible to you. It has to be clear. You have to be clear about where you want to go. And then you become it. And people think, oh, mm -hmm. first I have to become it for me to, I have to, be, to become what I want to become, then I can believe it or be, then I can see it. Mm -hmm. no, you have to think it, you see it, and then you believe it. Okay. So your mindset will determine, you will determine your, uh, your, your, attitude. your attitude. And this is something that was very beautiful if you had to go back. For those of you who are historians, mm -hmm. uh, or for those of you who've studied a little bit of history, you know, you know that the, the, the men, the toughest men of, uh, in battle, and I want to refer to Julius Caesar and uh, Cortez. So Julius Caesar, when he was landing on the shores of England, what they did, or what he did with his men, is that they burnt the ships. And so Julius Caesar, at this particular point, he started, he's standing on a cliff, or is it a reef, and with his men, he shows them the tongues of fire that are just engulfing the ships. Mm -hmm. And he shows them and he says, it's either we win or we perish. There's no going back. There's no <laughs> retreat. And this is the same thing that Cortez did when yeah. he got to Aztec. And he went to annihilate or dis decimate the, the government of, uh, like for the historians, Montezuma. Mm -hmm. People who know uh, Cortez and Montezuma and what happened. Cortez went to Aztec and he went about taking the entire um, nation uh -huh. and, and, and conquering it. So Cortez did the same thing. When they got to the shore, they burnt the ships. Mm -hmm. So when you burn the ships, the soldiers knew there's no going back. There's no, there's no retreat. There's no surrender. It's do or die. We either win or we perish. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of attitude now they went to war, knowing that we can't go back. Mm -hmm. Our ships have been destroyed, so we are here to win. So if you have that mindset of there's no retreat, no surrender, mm -hmm. you understand that either I win or I perish. Yeah. Ah, you, you, you have, now you have the right attitude. So and that's the right way to set the, your mindset. Your mindset, yes. Do, 
you, you, know, you, do, you do it, you, you do win or you win? You win or yes. <laughs> I, actually, because you don't want to perish. I don't believe there's anybody <laughs> no that wants, wants to, to perish. perish yeah. Yes, no one wants to perish. And this is something that I love. Um, I, I, I think I'm a huge proponent of the mm. loud mindset. And of course, I'm female, so I'm allowed to be biased. <laughs> the loudest mindset. Uh -huh. Because the lion is fierce. The lion is incredibly fierce. But when you look at the lion, it doesn't have any superior advantages to the any other animal. But the lion is fierce in the mindset. Because mm -hmm. we have been told a couple of times that the lion will never eat grass. Come rain, come sunshine. And when the lion um, mm -hmm. arises in the morning you know they say that in Africa mm -hmm. uh, there's a white man who came to Africa and said that you know when uh, it's in the morning the gazelle wakes up and he knows it has to run and the lion knows it only has to run as fast as the slowest gazelle <laughs> that's it wow. uh -huh. so so when the lion wakes up in the morning and the gazelle or when the animals the lion and the gazelle wake up in the morning they know they it's have warm. to run <laughs> either way you run Run. Yes. Wow. So when you have the fierce mindset, when you have that sort of mindset, then it detects your attitude. You know that you go through life, not as a, not as a by the way, not as a, mm. a, a failure. Because sometimes there's a beautiful poem mm -hmm. by a guy called um, Rudyard Kipling. It's called If. And there's a line that I love and it says that if, if, it's, it's if, in fact, is a poem. He's writing the poem to his son. Mm -hmm. And he's telling him how there are very many aspects in life that can make him a man. And he says that if you encounter defeat and triumph, and you treat both imposters just the same, then you, my son, are a man. That means that if you meet triumph and disaster, mm -hmm. these are imposters. They're not you. Mm -hmm. Your success is not you. Your failure is not you. Mm -hmm. So most people want to be defined by their successes. Mm -hmm. But their failures, you take a big blow. It's like, oh my goodness, I'm a failure. You, well, you become, you're either a success or a failure. Mm -hmm. But if you understand that those two are imposters, they don't, define they don't define who you are, then you just have a winning attitude and a winning mindset just knowing, well, whatever happens. Mm -hmm. So then who would you say you are if you're not your success, if you're not your failure? So how should one define themselves? You have to define yourself now by, by you and you need to have a value system. Mm -hmm. You need to have a value system. Who are you? You need to be resilient. I'm resilient. And um, I am um, I'm strong. I'm kind. I'm compassionate. Mm -hmm. I, I embody integrity. Those are some of the things that you need to have. So whatever happens, whether it's a failure or it's a success uh, subject that is happening or some, something that has happened to you, you just go about life knowing. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I have integrity. I failed, yes, but I have integrity. Yes. I failed, yes, but yeah. I have resilience. Mm -hmm. And um, which, in fact, the story of resilience, brick be to something. I don't know if I'm, uh, yes, you can give me the time. Yeah, uh, yes. Mm. Um, in 1980, mm, 1980, in the United you know? States, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love history because, you know, I love what Steve Jobs loves to say. We live uh, life forward, but we connect the dots backward. Uh, so you have to see where you came from mm -hmm. and why things are the way they are. And this is, of course, your audience is young people, so I won't. This is something that probably they will resonate with. Mm -hmm. in, in 1980, in the United States, there's something called the self-esteem movement. It's a very genuine, very noble cause. It was um, initiated by parents and teachers because they wanted to empower their kids. Mm -hmm. And you know that self-esteem is all about, you know, personal value and self-worth. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to empower their kids so that they can have a very high value of themselves. If you have a higher esteem, it means that you value yourself more. If you have a low self-esteem, it means that you don't, you don't um, like yourself that much. That means that you have a low self-esteem, you, you have low value for yourself. Mm -hmm. So they figured, okay, the best way, in fact, um, the fact that it was a very noble mm -hmm. movement, it was a very noble idea, the execution was incredibly flawed and it was erratic in terms of execution and in terms of the techniques. So here's the thing, they said, okay, we are going to shower the kids with rewards and with praises just for attempting. Mm -hmm. If you are number last, you're told, ah, but you tried, you're very good. Mm -hmm. If you played, mm -hmm. no, it doesn't matter whether the key was off, you're told, ah, but you're the next Mozart, you're the, you're the mm -hmm. next Beethoven, don't worry, you're good. So they would reward them for anything, for the bare minimum, for the bare, for the bare minimum in mediocrity. And then 10 years later, after now these kids have left the, the, the school system mm -hmm. and they were outside now in the real life, they were incredibly sensitive. And because they did not, they were sheltered from criticism uh -huh. and adverse consequences because they don't know how to take in criticism. So you've played your, the piano all your life. You've gone through life knowing that you're Mozart, that you're Beethoven. You're perfect, you're good. And then you come out here and people boo you off stage. They tell you, you're not as good as you think. You suck. Your music is horrible. Your work. Mm -hmm. And most of them would 
fall. What if they will just, uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 they would fall apart because they, what? What are you saying? What, what are you saying? I'm, I'm, I'm Mozart. Mm -hmm. I'm Beethoven. I am good. So it ended up being a flawed, uh, a flawed concept because now most people went through life, especially the, the young people, they went through life thinking that self-esteem is all about pampering yourself with good vibes and positivity all about you. Mm -hmm. And so the counter narrative for it or the antithesis for it, the antidote, I, should I say, mm -hmm. was resilience. You build on resilience. That you know that despite the adversities that you're going to face in life, mm -hmm. you have to push through. It doesn't matter the criticism that you face. If anything, criticism is important because it makes you stronger and it builds your temerity. Mm -hmm. It builds it builds your, your, your metal. You become better at doing the things that you want to do. So for instance, if you play the key wrongly, you're told, okay, just learn the key. Just learn how to play key C. Mm -hmm. That is what you're supposed to learn. Don't bother about being Mozart. Don't bother about being Beethoven. You're just going to do it. Or when you draw, your child draws, for instance, or when you're young, just mm -hmm. focus on the eyes and focus on the lips Until and focus on the right. nose. Don't focus about, oh my goodness, ah, this drawing is horrible. I'm not Picasso. <laughs> I am not Michelangelo anymore. I, I, I can't do yeah. this, you know. And mm -hmm. yes, because most of them are told, ah, this is great. This is amazing. This is Picasso material. You're the next. Picasso. Yes, you're yeah. the next Picasso. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the world and you're told this thing is not worth it to go to any gallery and people would just fall apart. Oh my goodness, so I'm not Picasso after all. Yeah, because y yes. uh, your reality, what you know, has really come yes. down on you. And yes, you, you've, you've been, you've been um, beat up. Somebody mm -hmm. has told you you're not as good enough. You don't measure up as you thought. But if somebody who has resilience, you persevere through the adversity, to the criticism, and just know I need to get the eyes right, which is very important. Even as a young person, when you go through life, you don't 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 measure yourself mm -hmm. with the goal or with the result, the end product. Mm -hmm. You have to measure yourself, or you have to um, equip yourself in terms of the process. Okay. okay. Um, let's 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 take it back to the young people in yeah. high school. I, I'm, I'm thinking most of them have left high school, you're told, ah, you got 90%, you're smart, you're, good. you're mm. intelligent, mm. you're bright, you're brilliant. Wrong. What you're supposed to do is tell them, ah, you got 90%, you must have worked hard to get 90%. Mm -hmm. You must have done your remedials. You must have. So they know that. Yes, you the must have pestered the teacher. Yes. So you go, to. you get your ninety percent, and you're like, oh my goodness, I worked hard. I got ninety percent mm. because I worked hard. Not because I'm intelligent. Not because, because I'm intelligent. I'm the best yes, the because day. what if you you you're given a test mm -hmm. that is difficult and you can't do it because I don't think there's anybody who has the monopoly of knowledge or mm. wisdom. Mm -hmm. Nobody has the nobody's a purveyor of wisdom. So mm -hmm. you can't t you can't say that all the time you're going to score 90. There's a time where you get a score that is 60 percent. So does that mean that you're no longer smart? No, <laughs> no it doesn't mean it that you know, Yes, yeah, so yeah. The, the, the focus should be, shouldn't be on the end product that mm -hmm. you're brilliant and you're smart in this one word term, these um, generic terms that you have for people. It's mm -hmm. supposed to strictly be on the process. The process. Yes, oh, you got 60%, next mm -hmm. time you do better. Wow, so it, it, it's encouraging. Mm -hmm. You understand that, okay, I didn't do better last time. This has nothing to do with me. It just mm -hmm. has everything to do with effort. That maybe next time, I'm going to put in effort. Mm -hmm. Okay, I applied for a position. Maybe the email I sent wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just had, haven't mastered the art of um, CV writing. Maybe my letter, my, uh, my letter heads aren't good enough if you're running a business or whatever and clients aren't coming to your door. You understand, okay, let me run, let me learn. Let me try to see how I'm going to up my game and become, uh, become better. So you say that's the mindset. Mm -hmm. So nothing faces you really. Mm -hmm. You just understand this is a challenge. And I'm going to do my best to make sure that I come the other side mm -hmm. unscathed. And if I'm, I'm scathed, however, I, have, I bear the scars of war, but it just means that I'm going to be a better individual for it. Wow. Yes. Amazing. And, you know, for some, uh, it's easy, you know, it's easier said, you know, to, to say that you need to have a positive mindset yes. and all that. But sometimes there are barriers mm -hmm. that come, you know, sure. the environment that you are, you are in mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. a barrier mm -hmm. for, for some people. Yeah. So how do they... Uh, work against this you mm -hmm. know, to still have a positive mindset ah that's yes. a brilliant question because you know they say that we are products of our environment mm -hmm. and um, that is where self-awareness has to come in you have to understand where you're coming from and you have to take responsibility for this life unfortunately nothing comes for free mm -hmm. you have to pay a price the sacrifice there's a cost for anything uh, everything has a cost mm -hmm. and um, you understand your environment 
most people know that I come, either you know that you come from affluence, you know that you, you enjoy uh, or you de your demonstration of opulence, that is something that you can see clearly. And there are those who know that they come from limiting environments. You can see that you come from a limiting environment. You can, you can tell that your environment was toxic. Mm -hmm. You can tell that your environment was limited in terms of resources. So you can tell. And um, we're living in the 21st century where information is at the palm of our hands. So you don't have an excuse as to why you ha don't have the information mm -hmm. that you need. You know, um, if, if it was uh, our parents, then we would say, yeah, they didn't have the knowledge, they didn't have the books. But today we have everything. So personal development, that's why it's called personal development. Mm -hmm. It's personal. You have to take the initiative to, to say, my environment is limiting, but I'm going to get myself out of this. Mm -hmm. Because in history, all through history, we've seen men and women who've risen to be captains, cap captains of industry. And yet they had nothing to write home about in terms of the environment and where they came from, but they had to pull them, themselves from the pits of, of hell from where they were in. So this is, it's a very personal journey. Mm -hmm. You have to understand where you are. And the problem with environment is that most people conform. Mm -hmm. Most people, yes, most people conform because, okay, in my environment, people never went to school. Mm -hmm. Where yeah. I come from, yeah. people Quite don't yeah. aspire for more. Where I come from, people don't do this. Where I come from, people don't do that. Where I come from, people don't travel abroad. People don't even dream mm -hmm. don't dare to, to dream. dream and you conform mm -hmm. and um, this is an it's, it's a very interesting it's a very interesting psychological um, experiment one that was um, let me also just cast Take a historical lens on this one <laughs> <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead let me just cast a historical lens on this one so yeah. in 1981 there's a psychologist called solomon ash mm -hmm. for those of, for those people who are in psychology class you know solomon ash mm -hmm. so solomon ash came up with this experiment it's called the theory of conformity mm -hmm. so he goes into he brings confederates into a room and he tells them uh, hey these confederates of course they're part of the experiment but they are participants who don't know that mm -hmm. so assuming that i am part of the participants and yeah. i'm brought into a room and so solomon ash has a ba has a blackboard here so for the sake of argument let's just assume that there are four lines mm -hmm. and then the fifth one the four lines are similar in terms of length and probably size yeah. but the fifth one is slightly longer and so one person comes in so the confederates are like 10 mm -hmm. so they come in one by one and they say um, those lines are similar the four lines and the fifth line are similar mm -hmm. first second up until the tenth the tenth person they come in and they say those lines are similar. similar. So they leave the room and then uh, the experimenter asks the participant, what do you think, what is your opinion regarding those lines? Mm -hmm. And I kid you not, every single time, people said those lines are the same. Despite the fact that there was overwhelming evidence to suggest <laughs> that the fifth line was nowhere close to the to length the of the four ones. Yes, people conformed. Mm -hmm. People said, because it is very difficult for most people to stand their ground. Most people don't have the spine to yeah. say, to, to have their own opinions and say, N I'm sorry, but the fifth line is different. Mm -hmm. I kid you, most people, 24%, only 24% of the people in the experiment did not conform. Wow. That goes to show you that the majority conformed. This means that in society, people are willing to change their thoughts, their ideas, their belief systems, their values to match that of the group. Mm -hmm. And that is why the people who have gone to do marvelous things in society are not, they're considered crazy. They're not part of society. Mm -hmm. And they say that society is just nothing but um, normalized average, a, a system of, you know, normali normalized no, averages. Normal. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Um, these are people, and you do the average thing. Most of you just do basically the same thing. So the people who go on to do extraordinary things mm -hmm. are considered outliers. Okay. We call them outliers because they don't play to the whims of society. So when you conform, especially as a result of your environment, most people conform because I have seen people do this. I have seen people in my family. We are teachers, so we're just going to be teachers. Mm -hmm. We have done because in my family, people are accountants. We don't do anything else. Do anything. So yes, that's just us. That's just us. That's what we do. In our family, uh, we don't do arts. We don't do the creatives. We don't do none of that. We just play ball. And that is very dangerous, especially for somebody who thinks that they have something else to offer and something else to give. It, end up, it ends mm -hmm. up stifling uh, your, your, your creativity and the person probably that you, yes, the, mm -hmm. the person that you're uh, meant to become. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now um, you've at least, uh, you know, uh, shed light to what we can do, you know, to curb the environment and everything. So now, once you have a positive mindset, is it enough to have a positive mindset and just leave it there? Or is there something that you need to do extra? Um, the beautiful thing about, in fact, that's a beautiful question because think people or people have a great mindset. Mm -hmm. 
but when the rubber meets the road that's when everybody else now just scatters people go their separate ways yeah. because um what you're supposed to do is execute mm -hmm. you have the growth mindset you know that effort is everything because i know that most people have ideas ah there's people, we, people have ideas <laughs> the, we are yeah. there's we are there's no we, we have we don't have a short supply when it comes to ideas people have ideas mm -hmm. but people, people don't creative. yeah people are very creative people have you know people, i can sit here and say but they have an idea about this room we can do this and that, we can do yeah. this and we can do that mm -hmm. and then i live <laughs> you do nothing i do about nothing it. about it i don't write an email to whoever is in charge of this place mm -hmm. i don't do anything to suggest that okay i'm going to come with my own um concepts of what I'm going to do and see how we're going to stand to change the structure here. Just mm -hmm. I have this idea and then I go home. Or I tell you, but they have an idea about what you're supposed to do. How about you get into business and then we do something and I go home and I sleep over it and I never wake up from it. Mm -hmm. I just sleep over it and continue sleeping you're just on sleeping it. sleeping over <laughs> it until <laughs> the end of time. Yes, until the end of time. I never, I never <laughs> wake up um, to do anything. So execution is, execution is very important. Yeah. You have to act. Mm -hmm. You have to act. And the problem with most people and most young people, the reason why we don't act is because we, waste, we are waiting for perfect conditions. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for a mentor. I'm waiting for resources. I'm waiting for the perfect time before I can start, before I can do this. Most of the time we just start. Like I started. I'm nowhere close to where I want to go. But you started. But I started. I started by looking for public speaking. What is public speaking? Mm -hmm. And that took me time. Mm -hmm. Because I figured this is not something that I want to do. I don't think I have the ability or the capacity to start before people and, and, and speak and say anything. Who wants to listen to me? I don't think I have anything meaningful mm -hmm. that somebody would listen to, let alone pay top dollar for it. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that was possible, but I had to start from somewhere. And, and then, yes, and then here I am. And then I had to, to look at uh, the mentors in the industry. I figured, oh my goodness, all these people are bougie. <laughs> they have done their time. <laughs> people have 15 years to their belt. Mm -hmm. uh, you're looking at public speakers, you're told Tony Robbins, you're thinking, Tony Robbins, I am no match to Tony Robbins. Who am I in Africa? And a woman black <laughs> in a third world country. I, this, I, but the beautiful thing about dreams is that your dream is supposed to scare you. It's supposed to scare everybody around you. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't scare if you, it doesn't scare enough. you, then it's it's not it's not big enough. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to scare you so that you know that especially when you go through life, there are some dreams that are supposed to be unattainable. Mm -hmm. So that it becomes a constant pursuit. Wow. It becomes a constant pursuit. You're always pursuing it. You know that I may never be Einstein. But I'll be a good physicist, no doubt about that. I'll Amazing. be a good physicist, mm -hmm. but I may never be Einstein. Mm -hmm. So if, 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 if you say that you want to be Einstein smart, that may be aiming Not too high, yeah. but chances are Einstein is here, you get here, mm -hmm. and that's good enough. Yeah, and you did the yeah. best. You you know, do, yeah. And they say uh, uh, you, you should aim to be better than you were mm -hmm. yesterday. You are mm -hmm. the you're the you're you're only competitor sure yeah mm -hmm. so how is it how important is that as we come to a close yes. in this conversation mm -hmm. Mm. so how is imp how important is you just competing with yourself and not competing with other people and having the pressures of life mm -hmm. uh, defeat you you know bog you down mm -hmm. the, the beautiful thing about in fact that is a very important question even as we wrap up maybe this is, is something if they forget everything else probably they should remember this that comparison mm -hmm. is the number one killer or stealer of joy it will, it will take away so much from you because you go about life comparing mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. And when you compare yourself, there's a high chance that you'd want to compete because I am looking at you and what you're doing and I'm comparing myself to you. Oh my goodness, she's young. Mm -hmm. She's eloquent. She's ex exceptionally beautiful. She, I love the class. I love the touch of, of, uh, of brilliance that mm -hmm. she has. And I'm, I want to compare myself to, when I compare myself to you, that means that I'll have to compete. So I'll structure my life to look like yours. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing or the worst thing about it is that I can do a great imp impersonation of you, but I can never be you. you can never be. There's mm -hmm. only one you. There's only one Nangami. You can aspire to be like Nangami. You can aspire to be like Steph, but you can, but never, you can be never be them. Mm -hmm. and, be and that's the, 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 the beautiful thing about it also is that you, it's because of authenticity. You bring your authentic self mm -hmm. to everything that you do. So you might be doing something that is, that is ubiquitous to everybody else in society, but you are unique, you're authentic, and that is why people come to you specifically because there's something about you mm -hmm. that is special to you. There's a gift that has been bestowed upon you by the heavens, by the universe, by God, whichever proclivity you believe in, that is specific to you, and you have to ascend to that place of talent and gift, and you have to give it your best. And you have to understand that you are the personification of divinity. 
Mm -hmm. You are the personification of divinity. Never forget that. Mm -hmm. Human beings. Yeah. We are the... Hmm. When you look at human beings and the universe, mm -hmm. this is the... This is how you see God. This is how we see God. The universe, the cosmos, and the way it is. So you have to understand. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that um, when you look at it, you have to understand that then the reason why you're here it is to serve humanity, serving a purpose that is more than yourself. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you uh, withdraw inwards, uh, or when you just go back inwards to find out who you are, you'll find it. The answer is there. You'll Amazing. find it. Amazing. What a best, you know, there's no better place to end this mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. than you know, the, the last point that you've just mentioned. Finally, just to tell people where they can find you if someone wants to reach you. And if anyone was to take anything from this, what would you want that to be? This is your camera. Uh huh. My social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Nangami Masaka, uh, that's my name. And uh, please go follow, leave a comment, a like. I'd really love to hear from you. And uh, your feedback, by the way, your feedback is critical to me. It's very important. I'd want to think what uh, you think about everything. And my take home is this. Just believe in yourself. It's a platitude. I know it's cliche. It has been said over and over again, but just believe in yourself because you have to be believe in yourself before anybody can believe in you. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I was, it's something that I said I was somewhere else uh, over the weekend and I would want to reiterate what I said. Cassius Clay, aka Muhammad Ali, believed in himself, called himself the greatest of all time, way before everybody else could, uh, everybody else knew who Muhammad Ali was. He believed himself, called himself the greatest of all time. In fact, I am implied to believe that He's the one who coined the first God, the greatest of all time, was the mm -hmm. greatest boxer. And he believed in himself way before anybody uh, believed in, in, in who he was. So just, just believe in yourself. Uh, that's Amazing. my take home. Yeah. Thank you very much, Nangami. That was incredible. We hope to have you again. Thank you for having me. Oh, and welcome. I hope to be here again. Yes, we love to have you. So that has been Nangami Masaka. She's a mentor, a corporate trainer, and a public speaker talking to us about mindset. I know you have taken something from this. If not, just believe in yourself. That has been her, you know, her final word on this. So uh, how about we take a short break and then Rama Goko will be coming on board with youth and politics.